The Denver Broncos fourth quarter rally against the Houston Texans fell short. Too many self-inflicted wounds in this game by the offense and the defense. What does the outlook look like now for this team? We'll dive deeper to that and much more. Today's Locked On Broncos postgame report. You are Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Denver Broncos dropped a 6 and 6 after Sunday's loss to the Houston Texans on the road in a game that many considered a must win. What are the ramifications of that? We'll dive deeper into that in today's brand new episode Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in. All the everydayers out there who make us your first listen every single day. Do us a favor, if you have not done so already, you can subscribe or follow this podcast for free on YouTube wherever you get your podcast. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantlyorange.com. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Sarah, disappointing game from the Broncos on Sunday, despite how thrilling it was down toward the wire here for them. The best of Denver, we didn't get to see that in Sunday's game against the Texans. And look, coming into this matchup, we had talked about this in the buildup. This was like a playoff game. And the last time the Broncos found themselves in this position was 2021, not 2020, 2019 against the Cincinnati Bengals. What happened in that situation? They fell short and it kind of looked like the moment was a little too big for them. It kind of felt like that here for the Broncos, especially on the offensive side of the ball for a large portion of this game here on Sunday. It definitely did, Cody. Obviously, I think the biggest number in this entire game is 0 for 11 on third downs, and and really that crippled the Broncos, the inability to move the chains on third downs. Of course, we saw a couple of clutch fourth down conversions, and we really were kind of hoping for another one there on the final play that the Broncos ran. Of course, Russell Wilson throwing his third interception of the game on a third and goal to go when you had maybe one play left in the back pocket there to save that one so hey i'm all for him trying to make a play cody russell wilson was under pressure quite a bit in this game he did well to avoid a lot of the pressure did take a few sacks but man uh, it was what was the talk going into this game russell wilson leads the nfl in touchdown to interception ratio of course then he goes out against the houston texans and throws three interceptions almost doubling his season total in one game there and Kudos to Derek Stingley Jr. Made one really great play on the ball. Then, of course, you had the tipped pass that resulted in an interception and then the heave there on third down. So, I I mean, it wasn't like Russ was out there just making bad decisions all game. But, man, that last play, you really want to see Russ save that (laughs) that desperation heave for a fourth down, if anything. So, just didn't feel like the Broncos really were executing well in that late situation there when they had opportunities to punch the ball in multiple chances from less than 20 yards. I mean, it wasn't, it was just tough sledding Cody and Russell Wilson and the the offense, they failed to come through in a big spot. Absolutely. And look, Russ had moments. He played well. He had moments where he didn't play so well. And, and look, you, you can attribute a lot. I think of some of these things to, to pressure. He was pressured quite a bit. Now, obviously Will Anderson jr. I mean, he's another guy you talked about Derek Stingley jr. Two interceptions on the day for him. But Will Anderson Jr. impacted this game consistently all throughout the afternoon. And, I mean, Denver's offensive line, for some reason, in pass protection, this was the one game out of all the games that we've seen them play during the five-game win streak where it's like they kind of looked like the old offensive line in terms of protect, uh, protection and, and obviously pressure allowed there. Mike McGlinchey struggled a little bit. Garrett Bull struggled after holding Miles Garrett to no sacks last week. So, for me, and look, and I always talk about this. I, I saw some fans on Twitter. They they sent me replies like, oh, this is, you know, the real Broncos have finally shown up. The reality of the situation is, folks, they're like the five-game win streak is not a fluke here for Denver. If you think that, you're more than entitled to your opinion. But the NFL, as we all tend to forget sometimes, is a week-to-week league. And unfortunately, the Broncos didn't bring their best effort forth in Sunday against the Houston Texans. This was a playoff atmosphere. The stakes were largely, you know, high for them. And now, I mean, it kind of take a little bit of a blow here. This was, in my opinion, a must-win game for the Broncos. They didn't do that. And despite all that went bad for them, I mean, trailing 22-10 to 10 in the fourth quarter, at, at, based on how the game was going through the first three quarters, Sarah, we were sitting there thinking like, oh, geez, like, dang, they got to score at least two touchdowns in order to win this game here. And they started making it interesting. And all of a sudden, you start having a little bit of belief like, okay, hey, 
Russ just delivers this beautiful strike to Cortland Sutton down the middle of the field. There were some missed opportunities there by Denver's offense. I, I personally, for me, I, I did not like how with there was a, like one minute left in the game. The Broncos coming out of the two minute warning immediately burned one of their timeouts. And then they ran a play and then they let like 35 seconds roll off on the clock. There was not a lot of urgency there. And I understand, look, if you score, you don't want to give CJ Stroud and them a lot of opportunity or time to maybe drive downfield, get into field goal range. But they'd also didn't have timeouts either. So for me, it was the cost analysis. And I understand that. But I agree with you on that last play. You maybe want to hey, chuck it, live to see another day. That first down play on first and goal there, it looked like Adam Troutman and little Jordan Humphrey were in the same area. So it looked like there was some confusion. Russ's pass to Cortland was a little high on that second one. But once again, the Texans dialed up pressure in that key moment. And Denver's offensive line, unfortunately, couldn't give Russ the time that he needed there in that situation. So Russ didn't play a great game. The offense didn't play a great game in totality in this game. And unfortunately, you mentioned the 0 for 11 on third down metric. That kind of sealed it there. This is a rough one to get away from the Broncos here on Sunday. Yeah, it really is. It's a tough pill to swallow. I mean, when you have a chance to win like that at the end of a game where you don't play super well offensively, it certainly makes it even harder. And you're converting fourth downs on a game-winning drive potentially, and you get all the way down inside the 10, and then to throw an interception at that point of the field, Cody, it's just, I mean, that's about as heartbreaking as heartbreaking gets, and especially with so much on the line right now. So, we're going to get a really great test, I think, of how how much fortitude does this Denver Broncos team have under Sean Payton because they bounce back after starting one and five to get all the way up to six and five. Now you're six and six. You've taken a pretty big step back. There's kind of I think there's four teams currently, Cody, ahead of the Broncos in the playoff race, which we will talk about. But now it's all about that fortitude. How are you going to bounce back from this now with the Chargers coming up next Sunday? Uh, the stakes are even higher for them and the room for error. Sean Payton said in the post-game press conference, you know, the margin for error is very slim now. And, and look, we even talked about it as well. Before this game, I felt like we, we addressed earlier on the show that, okay, hey, Denver maybe has room to, you know, lose maybe one more game, but they can't afford to lose more than one more game this season when there's six games left. Well, now there's five games left and they can't afford to lose a game at this point, especially with some other teams that we'll talk about jumping up ahead of them. We talk about conference record. Obviously, that was a major point coming in this game, just missed opportunity in the Broncos loss here on Sunday to the Houston Texans, who are a gritty and very, very tough football team. Got to give them a lot of credit. That is going to be a team, if they make it in the wild card, they might they might upset a team here in the NFL playoffs if they can hold on there. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Denver has to shift their focus. They have to learn from this game, and now they have to shift their focus to the Los Angeles Chargers this week here. And look, they're going to have to buckle down a little bit more on defense. The defense gave up some big plays in Sunday's game against the Texans. We'll talk about what went wrong there on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Whether you or your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to define how you give to yourself. And the holidays, they're a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during the tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. Now, for me, I've utilized BetterHelp in the past, and it's been beneficial to me. I think therapy is always a great thing, whether you're going through something or whether you're not. I think it's important to check in and figure out where you're at, whether that's with career, with life, with relationships. BetterHelp helped me with that last year when I utilized them, and it was easy for me because I could schedule an appointment at my own convenience, and I was matched with a licensed therapist in just minutes that I vibed well with. If you're thinking of starting therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and best of all, suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. It was a tough day for the Denver Broncos secondary when trying to cover Houston Texans breakout receiver Nico Collins, who had a huge game on Sunday in the Denver Broncos. Unfortunate loss to the Houston Texans. We're going to talk about what exactly went down there and maybe a certain play and sequence in this game that ultimately altered the outcome in favor of Houston. Before we do that, though, I want to say Thank you and give a huge shout out to every single one of you that makes Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day, we appreciate you. Win, lose, playoff race, we're here 
every single day, every single step of the way. So appreciate you listening anywhere that you get podcasts, as well as watching on YouTube where you can engage in the comment section. Sound off after a loss. Of course, Cody, we know this was a big time Nico Collins performance and the Texans needed it desperately. No Dalton Schultz for them. Tank Dell goes down with an injury. Nico Collins was really counted on, especially as the Broncos came to play against the run in this game. So talk about Nico Collins and what went down with that Denver Broncos secondary. I have no idea what went wrong. I just know that the Houston Texans and Stroud, as we all talked about it coming to this game, they love to air it out. They're the second-ranked passing offense in the NFL, and they aired it out. And once again, they capitalized on explosive plays. Fabian Moreau early on getting picked on uh, in coverage against Nico Collins. And obviously, you talk about the injury to Tank Dell. Absolutely brutal for him. He's a very, very quick and talented young man. We obviously hope that he's going to make a full recovery. I think it's a broken fibula. If I, a fractured fibula, if I'm not mistaken. So he's going to be out the rest of the season for Houston. But this was also a game where Denver's, you know, you talk about, okay, hey, stop the run, but you also got to cover. I felt like covering these targets and these threats was probably the biggest emphasis for Denver's defense coming into this game. And one thing that we saw, unfortunately, just explosive play after explosive play. And, and look, Houston wasn't that great on third down either, but they were capitalizing on big plays on second down. I mean, there was a penalty on Alex Singleton early on in the game that, Look, I think when you look at it, it just it's frustrating. Yeah, you shouldn't shove the guy, but also CJ Stroud came up and headbutted Alex Singleton with his helmet. And then Singleton shoves him, gets the flag thrown on him. That led to Damian Pierce punching it in. And that honestly, right there, that's a little bit of a difference maker. Now it happened early, but I can't help but think how big of a difference maker that was in the overall outcome of this game on Sunday. It's just unfortunate. Just too many undisciplined moments there. But Denver, like in the second half, they started to buckle down a little bit. They started to make some plays. P.J. Locke coming up big on one drive there with obviously a tackle on first down, a sack on second down, and Denver's defense getting an opportunity for the offense to get the ball back. But you mentioned it. Explosive plays through the air. Nico Collins, man. I mean, early on in this game, that big play down the left sideline, he would finish the game with nine catches for 191 yards and one touchdown. He was on pace for 200 yards receiving in this game. and. To be honest with you, it was a little concerning, especially after Patrick Sertan went down in the first quarter with an injury. Luckily, he was able to come back, but Denver just seemed like on, on crossing patterns, on deep plays, they felt like he was going to stop and settle, but Stroud's ability to get outside the pocket and extend plays with his legs, once again, a key that we talked about last week leading up into this game, hurt the Broncos' defense in a big-time way. Not only did Nico Collins have a big game, but even Brevin Jordan came up with some big performances and conversions for them as well. Just not what we've seen from the Broncos. And look, what, what have we talked about? Hey, Denver has generated takeaways at a high amount. The Texans coming into this matchup, they didn't give the ball away that much, and they didn't give it away a single time. Now, there was a strip sack, unfortunately, that the Texans had recovered there, and then Russ threw an interception on the next play after they forced the punt. So it's like, oh, what if Denver recovers that instead of forcing the punt? Who knows how, what would have happened here? But unfortunately, the defense just they didn't play well enough to the standard in which they have been in this five-game win streak. And that sequence that you just mentioned right there, Cody, is the exact sequence that I alluded to earlier. You fall on that fumble. You have the ball with well within scoring range, only down 16 to 10 at that point. The Broncos really had to scrape and claw their way back into this game, overcoming a couple of those turnovers that you mentioned, including that one right after Houston they recovered the Jaquan McMillan strip sack. They punt the ball away. Russ throws the tip ball interception. And that really was the sequence right there that it, it didn't doom the Broncos, obviously, because after the Texans scored a touchdown right there, the Broncos came right back and got one of their own, the Cortland Sutton, the brilliant catch that he had. So it really is just, a, a, excuse me, that was the Russell Wilson quarterback sneak. Cortland Sutton's was the first touchdown. But the, the point is, is that if the Broncos had the opportunity to get the ball inside the, I believe it was the 30 or the 40 right there, it was deep in Houston territory, that is a game altering situation. And, and it really did just it was it was a critical, critical miss by the Broncos. Of course, you never know which way the ball is going to bounce, but you're right. They didn't force a single turnover in the loss. And ultimately, that was the difference in the game. The Broncos losing that turnover battle allowed the Houston Texans just enough possessions, just enough points to pull out the victory in this game, even though the Broncos had that shot there at the end. So in a way, Cody, it gives you some confidence that, man, if, if the offense can just be a little more efficient while turning the ball loose, which we asked for on this show, we yeah. say turn the ball loose, throw the ball downfield. Well, they did that, and ultimately it was met with 
some mixed results, right? Obviously, you had uh, the the one interception that Stingley had was on a downfield throw to Sutton where he was open. But it, it's just the Broncos need to find a way to play some more complete football. And we, we've seen glimpses of it, but we haven't seen it consistently. And I think that was kind of evident in this game against Houston. And that's what we were talking about as well. Like, while Denver's offense is playing well enough, right, because the defense was generating those takeaways and turnovers, they're going to be tested at some point, especially if they hope to make the playoffs. That, hey, they're going to have to be able to put up points. They're going to have to be able to march the ball downfield. I mean, Denver's first four possessions is game. Punt, 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 punt. And obviously, when you factor in, you get you know extra possessions, and there's three interceptions. I mean, Denver missed out on so many opportunities. Once again, Sarah, in my opinion, leaving a lot of points out there on the field. You look at it as you go back and watch the film, and I'm sure it's just going to make you sick a little bit. Like, ah, man, if Denver would have just done this one play better, if they would have converted. Like, early on in the first drive, like, they, they aired it out to Cortland Sutton twice. One in double coverage, unfortunately, didn't get caught. The other one, a little bit of a drop by Cortland Sutton, but I felt like he made up for it late in that game. We just go back and look at maybe one or two of these plays throughout the course of this game and say, man, if Denver would have done this, things would have been better. But the uh, the formula that's helped them win the five games, Sarah, didn't come to fruition here on Sunday. That's get takeaways and hope that the offense can put up points. I mean, Denver, even special teams, special teams didn't have a good day for the Broncos on, on Sunday's loss. So once again, you know, you're looking for that perfect game as Sean Payton continues to allude to. But the reality is it's hard to play a perfect game in the NFL and when you're having deficiencies on defense, you're having deficiencies on the offensive side of the ball and special teams, it's hard to win, let alone hard to win on the road. It is, Cody. It's brutal. I mean, yeah, certainly not a perfect game here by any means. The Broncos will continue to search for that. But luckily, there is hope with the way the rest of the AFC games have played out in week 13 now of course you you don't want to need help all the time but the broncos are going to need help i mean they had already lost five games going into this week now they've lost a sixth like you said earlier cody that margin for error is super super slim but there are things transpiring as we're recording this episode that could ultimately make this weekend somewhat of a wash i mean in terms of you, you hate losing you want to get that victory you want to get into that seventh win as quickly as possible but Man, there are some things that are happening as we're recording this that could be helping the Denver Broncos just a little bit. Now, the room for error is very small. I mean, Denver really has no more room for error at this point with just five games remaining. What do these five games look like here for the Broncos? What's at stake, especially with five AFC games left on the table or four AFC games left on the table? We'll dive deeper that here on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Today's episode of Lockdown Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase when you go on there, on their app, or on the website to be able to get tickets to the events that you want to see. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. If you want to go to a Broncos game, a Nuggets game, an Avalanche game, but you want to see when you're there what your vantage point of all the action is going to be like, Game Time gives you that experience inside of their app. They have all-in prices that show your total up front so you know that you're getting a great deal without any hidden fees. And you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time here today. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Once again, terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Locked On Broncos post game report: The Broncos dropped to an unfortunate six and six. On the afternoon following Sunday's tough road loss, 22-17 to to a feisty and stingy Houston Texans team. We just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day every single day. You can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So however you choose to listen to us or to watch us, we appreciate you so much for taking time out of your day to get all the insight you need on the Denver Broncos. Now at 6-6. Six and six, Five games left on the season here for the Broncos. Two more road games as part of this three-game road trip. Can't help but look back and say, look, this game on Sunday against Houston was a must-win. They lost it. So now the pressure is on. And I think it's amplified even further now. As we've talked about, there's things going ongoing right now in the AFC playoff hunt inside the wild card race as is. 
but Denver simply can't afford to make any more mistakes. They simply can't afford to lose another game at this juncture of the season. Sarah, their final five games. Okay, you got an AFC West divisional matchup here against the Chargers this upcoming weekend. You've got a road game that's flexed to primetime on a Saturday against the Detroit Lions, non-conference. And then you have three straight AFC games to close the season, Christmas Eve against the New England Patriots. Then you have a home game against the Los Angeles Chargers on New Year's Eve, and then you close out the season on the road against the Las Vegas Raiders. That's not an easy stretch here for the Broncos in any way, shape, or form. And the offense is going to have to play better. The defense is going to have to figure out a way to stop the explosive. Special teams can't turn in a performance that they did on Sunday. But the biggest thing of all about Sunday's loss here, the Broncos' conference record once again, sitting at 3-5. and five. Tiebreaker scenarios, they've lost that to Houston. This does not bode well for Denver's playoff chances. They've taken a massive, massive blow after Sunday's game. Right. With a win, it would have brought their odds of making the playoffs up over 60 percent with a loss. It's down in the 20s of percent. So, I mean, like you said, Cody, it's it's really a big swing one way or the other this week. It wasn't the the season ender by any means. But, mm -hmm. hey, we could look back at this Houston game in a few weeks and say, man, if, if the Broncos have been able to convert from eight yards away against the Houston Texans, right? And that's exactly what you don't want to have to do at the end of a season. You don't want to have to look back at a missed opportunity to win a game like this because now you are, like you said, three and five against the AFC. You've got four AFC games remaining on the schedule. You cannot lose a single one of those. Now, the margin for error is such that you probably do need to win out, Cody, but in the AFC right now, things are wacky. There's a number of seven and four, seven and five teams ahead of Denver right now. Pittsburgh looks like they're going to drop to seven and five. Arizona's kind of kicking their butts a little bit. Cleveland with Joe Flacco, who's I don't know if he's still in his prime, Cody, but he's out there playing for the Browns right now against the Los Angeles Rams. And the Broncos desperately need the Rams to win that game. Indianapolis came back in overtime to get to seven and five against the Tennessee Titans. That is not good for the Denver Broncos. And then, of course, Houston is right there with Indianapolis at seven and five. And both of those teams have better conference records. So it really it's not great. If Cleveland can lose, Cody, that keeps those teams all at seven and five. But now you've got your tied in record with Buffalo. You've got a tiebreaker over them. And the Chargers are kind of right behind you now. They're five and seven. So this all of a sudden becomes an interesting scenario next weekend for the Chargers to say, hmm, we can beat the Broncos. We can not only maybe knock them out of the race, but we can keep ourselves in it. So there's a lot of scenarios going on right now. Broncos going to have to root for a number of teams to lose, but their margin for error is such that, man, they if they don't win out or win all but one game remaining the season, there's probably no discussion to be had. Yeah, and it just goes back to weeks one, weeks two, right? Always going back to the early parts of the season. And look, I think this is where the NFL is so intricate is that what you do early on in the season, gosh, it matters so much. Like you can't put yourself in a hole. And look, I, I applaud the Broncos for clawing themselves out of the hole that they dug themselves in when they were at one and five. The teams that they beat along the way, it was impressive in their five-game win streak. But then you lose a game like this, it just it kind of leaves a sour taste in your mouth. And look, Broncos country, a lot of fans are frustrated, and rightfully so. I understand, hey, nobody likes a loss. Like, this is our first losing podcast that we've done since, gosh, what was it? It was the Kansas City Chiefs Thursday night football and, game. It's been a while since we've had a losing podcast here. But the, the reality of the situation is the, it is week to week. I don't think that Denver's run that they had, the five-game win streak, I don't think that was a fluke. They played really good football. It, there's no luck involved. And if you say that luck is involved in football, I have to say I don't. I just don't agree with you. Luck doesn't exist in football. You make plays happen, you get in position. Denver just didn't play a clean game on Sunday. Is it tough? Is it frustrating that they lost? Absolutely, 100%. They could have played better in so many different aspects on offense, on defense, and especially on special teams. But they still have an opportunity, as Sarah had alluded to. There's other teams, and I look, I know on tomorrow's episode of the show, what we think we will do, we'll take a look at the AFC after all the games, and we'll also take a look at – the entire AFC West. What does the division look like? I mean, so much at stake here for Denver with just five games remaining. Still some meaningful football be played in December. So obviously, while the loss is frustrating, Denver is not out of it just yet here. So a lot riding on the whole entire situation here, Sarah, for this Broncos team. And maybe just throwing out some other things here as well. Denver, from a rushing standpoint, they accumulated over 100 yards on the ground, 118. But I feel like there's got to be a little more consistency with the run game. It seems like there's times where you should be getting six or seven yards. It ends up being like a two or three yard gain, right? We're seeing guys bounce back into the backs of the offensive linemen. 
part of that is there. You know, and I think another formula that's kind of been revealed is that Jaleel McLaughlin, when he's in, he's usually getting the ball. And so defenses are kind of sniffing that out. So how does Denver maybe avoid some of this one-dimensionalness going forward? I think that's an interesting interesting thought to ponder here as we get ready to close out today's show. Yeah, I think you're right on about that, Cody. It's just about making the offense more dynamic and not have stretches of play where the announcers are talking about the Broncos had more yards on that one drive than they had in their first four combined. You know, we can't be having <laughs> those stretches of just nothingness. You have to have some sort of consistency offensively. Every team's going to have a three and out here or there, but man, you need to start becoming a threat. Well, what did we talk about at the very beginning of the show? Oh, for 11 on third downs. I mean, that's, you deserve to lose a game if you if you put forth that kind of effort on third down, just straight up. And the Broncos, they that's what they that's the reality of the situation. 0 for 11 on third downs. How can you possibly expect to win a game where you go 0 for 11 on third downs? You throw three interceptions. Yeah. You don't jump on the fumbles that are that are on the ground. I believe the the Texans fumbled a couple of times in this game, so it mm -hmm. really it ended up being just a situation where when you look back. Did the Broncos deserve to win? No, but they still had a chance, which means there's this tension right now between the Broncos. Like they're they're trying so hard to be a good team, but they're just they're they're still in the acclimation period of learning how to win as opposed to learning how not to lose. And so it's tough period of growth right now. But late in the season, now you've got to find a way to make, like you said, Cody, you make your own luck, like Harvey Dent said. In, in the dark night, he's like, I make one look. You got to figure out a way to get the, the coin to be heads on both sides so the ball bounces your way and you're the one making the plays. No, we'll see what happens here with the Broncos. Big week ahead, folks. We'll have you covered every step of the way here on the Locked On Broncos podcast, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts, or also you can watch us on YouTube. Don't forget, subscribe or follow so you never miss out on all the conversation surrounding your favorite team on Sundays. For all you everydayers out there, tomorrow's episode of the show, we'll take a look at the aftermath. We'll hear from Broncos head coach Sean Payton on his conference call. We'll share updates as necessary. And on top of that, we'll take a look at the state of the AFC and the AFC West on tomorrow's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos.